everybody, how's it going? We are back for another Cooking with Vinny Live. Um, I had some folks asking me to do something with scallops, so that's what I went and did this week, and I was also looking to try to get some risotto onto the uh, cooking thing, so here we are. We're gonna do scallops and risotto. It's a great combination, just for the simple fact, scallops are kind of lighter, full of flavor, and then we're gonna have something a little bit on the heavy side, like risotto, that's gonna actually you know come together and fill you up. Um, so, we'll get started. It's relatively easy as for the amount of ingredients, but it does become a little time consuming um, and it's a little bit more on the tedious side because you're going to be stirring constantly to cook the risotto. Alright, uh, first off, we're going to talk about the scallops. We have, um, right here, I have probably U15s. I told you guys to try to go for U10s. Uh, basically what that means is you're going to get about 10 scallops per pound. Um, U15s, you get about 15 per pound. Um, so depending on the size of your scallop and depending on how many people you have, that's what we're looking for, um, you know, for the number that you want to serve. If you have, you know, large U10s or something like that, you get away with serving three. Um, you know, if they're a little bit smaller like this, you're going to serve five. Also, scallops aren't cheap. So you do three large portion of risotto if you have a larger family or, you know, dig deep, get five and everybody's happy with a big amount of scallops. <clears throat> um, real quick, I'll show you the scallop here. Um, you can see there is the membrane on the side. These pop right off. So you just want to peel that off and just give yourself the perfect round scallop. You can eat it, but as that cooks, it's going to tighten and it's going to create a very tight part on the scallop which can actually cause it to dry out over there so you don't really want to do that um, and it, it you know just gets a little tough so if you throw them on the side throw it in your dog's food bowl or something for a treat that always works um, but yeah just take them off the other thing when it comes to cooking the scallops is you want them dry um, to the touch and that is basically because you don't you don't want the moisture on the exterior because that's going to create two things. It's going to create a barrier that's going to uh, get in between the oil and the scallop. So it's not going to get that crust, that caramelization of the protein that we're looking for. And the other thing is when you stick it in hot oil, it's going to splatter and burn you. And we're trying to avoid that at all costs. So um, basically all you need to do, get a paper towel and blot them dry. And, you know, you can stick them in the fridge for just a few minutes, too, while we get some other things going. And that'll kind of help with the air circulation in the refrigerator to dry them out as well. So, just a regular old paper towel. And, you know, just kind of blot them. And just make sure that they're dried off. Try not to put them on a plate that's going to have a lot of leftover juice if it's the plate that you use to, like, defrost them if they were frozen or something like that. Um, I did also recommend for you guys to look for dry pack scallops, and we can touch on that. Um, the reason you look for dry pack, and I kind of went through that in the notes, but it just means that they did not add liquid to um, the packing, which will penetrate the scallop and then cause it to lose its flavor. You want to have as you know, much flavor as there as possible. I mean, you're paying good money for this piece of uh, mollusk so <laughs> you want to uh, you know get your bang for the buck so if you buy in like a cheaper scallop it's probably wet packed it was probably flown in from somewhere like super far away and it's just not going to really be worth it of course the day after i purchased these scallops i was able to find some u10s and um they were massive and I was like, man, I want to buy those, but I already bought these, so I just kind of <laughs> skipped it. I let my uh, pocket do the thinking on that one instead of my belly. <laughs> all right, so these are getting all dried up. That is done, and I'm going to put these in the fridge. Just like I said, that air circulation in there is going to just help dry them off a little bit. We don't need to cook these till right about the very end of our risotto. So they cook really quick. It's about two minutes per side and um, we just don't want to, you know, have them sitting around and get all chewy while we're getting everything else ready. 
All right, so the scallops are out the way. Um, another thing, I know I told you guys to chop the tarragon um, as part of your prep work, but I probably I kind of realized that tarragon's not something that you guys work with a lot, and you might not have known how to do that. Um, so I just, I did chop mine already, but um, basically it's real easy. You only want to do the leaves and you just want to grab it um, by the top as the, at the firmest point, it kind of gets a little loose. So just grab it at that firmest point and then you just pull downward using kind of your fingertip and maybe your nail. So you're trying to get it to not break. Of course, it's going to break now before it was nice and easy, but it's probably because it's sitting out on the plate here for so long. And it just pulls those leaves right off of the stem. The stem is kind of stocky. It's similar to like a rosemary. It's not as, you know, stocky as that, but you don't want to end up, you know, with that in your throat or it's just going to ruin the texture of the dish. Also, you can leave a couple extra stalks so that way you can garnish your plate, either with the whole stalk or you can just sprinkle some of the tarragon over the top to make it look pretty. So we'll set that aside for that later. Um, as of right now, what we need to do, three different pans on the stove. We are going to have a small stock pot that is going to have our chicken stock in it. We're going to get that up to a simmer and uh, the larger stock pot we're going to use for the risotto itself. We're going to get two tablespoons of olive oil in there and we're going to start sweating down the onions over medium heat. So we're going to head over there. Take your stock and your onions for now. All right, so I'm getting still getting used to these burners on this stove. Um, the stock we just want to get to a simmer. We don't want to really have it evaporate at all because we're going to use this to make the risotto. Um, risotto is you know, arborio rice, it is just a style of rice. I had some questions about that. Um, basically, you know, like white rice is a longer grain rice and you're gonna cook that just in water like we've done in the past. Arborio rice is a short, round, highly starched rice. And instead of cooking that um, like you would normally cook regular rice, just like steaming it and boiling it, you're gonna saute it and we're gonna coax that starch out of it using um, the <laughs> using the stock and that's just going to add that flavor of the chicken make it really rich and then <clears throat> you know you're just going to get that starch out which is going to create the risotto to become really really creamy all right so we're going to put two tablespoons of olive oil into the pot we're going to start sauteing the onion we're going to cook this to translucent but we really want to try to not brown it we want the risotto to have kind of a nice, lighter, kind of white, but a little bit creamy look to it, but nothing that's going to give it like too much of a brown. So just get that down to a uh, medium heat. If you feel like your pan's a little hot, just take it off of the burner. And we're just going to slowly kind of sweat this down. Make sure you have a good sturdy spoon for when you're making risotto. You don't want something that's flimsy because you're going to continually stir this dish and um, have a ladle out as well. <clears throat> so we're going to need to ladle the broth into the risotto as we're cooking. Like I said, try not to get any real strong colors on that onion. You just want to get it to its light, translucent, a little bit on the soft side. Go ahead and get your rice, the Oreo rice, and the white wine, quarter cup of white wine, bring that over as well. Zoto, white wine. All right, they're the two things we're going to go adding in now. The tarragon, the Parmesan cheese, the lemon zest, and your lemon juice are things we're gonna add at the very end, almost when it's off the heat. Um, because we don't want those things to really cook. We wanna add, we wanna get as much flavor out of them as possible and not change the flavor of them um, by cooking them on the stove. 
Um, <clears throat> I don't think I had you guys do your prep for your lemon zest, so while your onion's going, um, you can go ahead and do that. Um, I just use, you know, a cheese grater, a fine one, and just, you know, lightly skim it over the top. Try to only get the yellow. You don't want to use any of the white because the white's going to get that bitter taste in there. Um, and then use, get your zest first, use that same lemon, and that's going to give you two tablespoons around of lemon juice. So you get your, your one teaspoon, one tablespoon of lemon zest, and then your juice out of the same lemon. So you only need one lemon. So my onion is still needing some time, so you want to just keep it a little stir. If you're working on any of your other stuff, getting your um, lemon zested up and your lemon juiced. And we're also, you know, waiting for our uh, stock here to come up to temperature. I'm actually going to move this stock over to this burner because I want it as close as possible to where I'm working. For your scallops, you want to use a non-stick pan. Um, there's a lot of things you, you really like to have that stainless steel pan for because you get a good sear and it's going to leave some char and chunks on the pan, on the, uh, on the pan that you're going to use to make a sauce. But for this, you really want to use a non-stick pan so that way you get those that quick sear, you're able to flip it over and you're not going to ruin the scallop by having it get stuck and breaking. And, it's just not fun when you're, you know, you're dealing with food that's a little bit on the costly side. You want to try to make it as the best you can, you know. All right, so my onions are becoming translucent here. So I'm going to be adding the arborio rice right into the onion. Do you want to come take a quick peek at that, Sarah? They're just kind of sweating down where they're starting to become clear. You don't want to, you know, it's it's cooking through, and they'll continue to cook after the right if after we put the rice in. We're going to add the rice right to this, kind of sauté that a little bit. The rice will also become more of a translucent color. Then we're going to hit it with the white wine, and then after that is when we'll start with the stock. All right, so that's your one cup of aborio rice. I'm just going to toss all of this to kind of coat it. Now when we start adding the stock and the other juices to this and you're stirring it, you kind of want to stir it soft. Don't get real vigorous and, and moving it heavily because you can, you can really force that starch out and create um, something where it gets really, really like too creamy and a little bit clumpy. You don't want this to be overly loose, but at the same time, you don't want your risotto, when you take a spoon to serve it, it's like <laughs> the worst mashed potatoes ever, like cement or something, you know, you want, you want it to have a nice texture, really creamy, and um, it, it's something that's actually really easy to make, and it's well worth it. going to take, you know, a couple minutes to get it where we want it. sauteing just you know make sure you're getting caught up on your prep um, make sure you have your your lemon juice and all that stuff it's gonna come out you know that's not coming till the very end so you'll have some time in here to, to work with it but just kind of you know make sure you're getting up on your stuff three tablespoons of butter 
Uh, one of those is going to be used with the scallops. The other two are going to go into the risotto at the very end of cooking as well, along with you know all the other fun flavors we're going to add to this. Tarragon, if you guys have never had that, is um, it's a kind of a lighter, a little bit of that black licorice, but not overwhelming. It's used a, a lot in seafood dishes, like tarragon butters for lobster, scallops, of course, some, sometimes some shrimp, um, just depending on you know whatever dish you're using. But it, it goes really well hand in hand with seafood. Have you put the white wine in yet? I have not. Just giving it um, a little more time on the on the rice just to kind of get that translucent look. I kind of messed up on my uh, burner and tur turned the front one down instead of the back one a second ago. I'm uh, trying to keep it over that medium heat, so um, I need to make sure that I'm up to temp right. I'm getting back there, so. Once the wine goes in, we're going to let that hit and it's going to actually evaporate completely. So if you're at the point right now to get that wine in there, you don't want any color starting on your rice. You just want, um, you know, that little bit of translucent. So, you know, kind of see through, just like your onions. takes about, you know, 30 seconds or more. You can kind of see how that creaminess on the bottom of the pan there, I know there's a lot of fog in the way, but if you can see those little creamy lines, that's the starch that's starting to release from the risotto already. All right, you're gonna take one ladle of your stock, and get it in there. And like I said, remember, you don't want this to stick, so get, you know, give it a little bit of a rough push if it's stuck on the bottom but you just kind of want to stir this. You want to move it, but you don't want to get super vigorous with your stirring. Once that liquid evaporates, you're going to hit it with another ladle and just do the same thing again. Just kind of slowly keep that working. If you feel like you're, um, you can go to like a little bit of a medium low if you're, you know, running a little hot. You know, you think everything's kind of going a little fast on you. Right. And then once the liquid is evaporated, go right back in with another ladle, and we're going to continue to do this. And it's going to happen for about 25 minutes, so it's a little bit boring, a little bit tedious. But this is how we make risotto, and this is how, why, when you go out to dinner, risotto costs so much. Because there's labor hours in it. Now, when they do this in a restaurant, the cool thing um, about doing it for bulk is you're going to cook this to pretty much three quarters being finished. And you can do the same thing if you're gonna have a dinner party. So you're gonna cook your risotto to where it's almost done. You're gonna have a cookie sheet laid out on the side of you. And once it comes off and it's ready, 
where you're about three quarters done, you're gonna dump it out on the cookie sheet and you're gonna spread it really thin all over. And basically right after that, you're just gonna take your spoon and you're gonna cut some lines through it, just use it to move it so it creates separation. And then just put that in the fridge and let it cool down. It'll stop the cooking process to where it's you know just gonna be kind of fast. So then when you have your friends and family come over and you're gonna make um, a risotto dinner with a piece of fish or some scallops or you know some lobster, whatever you wanna do, take it back out and then you're gonna hit it in the pan. The same thing that we're doing now by adding stock and the risotto back into it and just start stirring again. And you're, you'll finish the risotto, but it's gonna come up to temperature, be nice and creamy, and it'll be ready to go, and you don't have to do it for 25 minutes right when everybody's at your house. It'll take you three to five minutes to finish it off. So every time you're doing this, you wanna to try to get it to where it's pretty dry, not super dry where it's gonna to stick to the bottom of the pan, but you just wanna get it, you know, where it's, that liquid is being absorbed and then also like evaporating off. Don't add too much too fast. You don't wanna uh, get, make it too, like last too long in the pan with it. Other thing about the scallops, you need to make sure your pan is hot before those scallops get in there. You do not want to have your um, your scallops hitting that cold pan because you're, they're going to be underdone on the outside. They're gonna, they're, they're not going to have any color. They're going to they're going to lose flavor of the sear. You know that caramelization of the proteins is what's going to, you know, the sugars in the protein is what's going to give it a lot of extra flavor and texture to it. And if your pan is not hot enough, you're going to end up with a flavorless white blob on your plate. You don't want that. You want to have a nice brown crust where it's looking good, tasting better. Outside's a little bit crisp, and the inside is super tender. When do the peas go in? Good call, Sarah. They go in at the very end as well. Um, we put those in uh, before we take it off the heat. I kind of forgot about the peas. I have them measured and they're still in the fridge. <laughs> I forgot it was a pea risotto. And that's another thing too, if you you know, don't like peas, or if you want to change your risotto up, um, you shiitake mushrooms in there are really good. Um, sweet corn risotto is really good. There's tons of different ways to just kind of change this recipe to make it um, your own, and just add different flavors and you know keep it fun and you know not something you're going to get bored with by always having the same vegetables. Basically, a catalyst for flavor again. So, when does the butter go into the risotto? Uh, that's going to go in at the end as well, right around the time the, the peas are going to go in. We'll get that to melt um, into it, and then once all of that's incorporated, we'll pull it off of the heat, and then we'll add all of the uh, the fragrances like the lemon and the tarragon and stuff. Will you use all of the broth in that? For the most part, yes. Um, you can taste your risotto towards the end, but normally one cup of risotto is gonna take the whole four cups of liquid because what's happening with versus rice, you're, you're stirring it and it's absorbing, but at the same time, the steam that's coming off is that liquid that's leaving. So, 
you're, you're cooking it off and you're adding it to the dish at the same exact time. And your skillet, you have it turned on? Um, I don't have my skillet turned on yet. I was going to just touch on that. Um, I'm going to wait just a little bit. If your skillet takes a little bit longer to heat up, you can go ahead and get it turned on. Um, but if it's going to heat up relatively quick, you don't want to um, turn it on too early. You don't, you don't want it overly hot. We want to get it nice and hot. You don't want anything to like throw in there and then it's just start burning everything immediately. are getting hungry and they smell this I think. I think it's for them apparently. We will season the scallops, salt and pepper on both sides right before um, they go into the pan. Not too much, just enough to give it a little bit of flavor. see how the rice is kind of expanding which I'm sure you're seeing in your own the rice is just kind of getting a little bigger starting to get creamier now this is pretty much an easy thing to double if you um, you know you want to make eight or two cups which would be about eight servings uh, risotto, this is the perfect amount. Um, risotto is really not supposed to be a super huge portion on your plate. Um, so you don't want to have, you know, of course you can split this between two people and be happy. But really it's, you know, this is perfect for four. But if you're super hungry and you want to have, you know, more of it, just double the recipe. And, you know, it'll work out just as good. Or if you have a lot more people than Sarah than I. One day when we're allowed to have friends over again. <laughs> we'll, we'll uh, make this a little bit more exciting. Bring some people into it. tell with the risotto itself like as you're you know stirring it like at first you're putting that one cup in here and you're like how is this one cup of dry grain going to feed four people but like you can tell as you start to add um you know your liquids that rice just keeps growing and growing and growing and that's what's going to make it you know a good amount of substance and then you're going to add some veggies to it you know and all those things it's just going to expand it out a little bit now, if you have, say, somebody with you that doesn't want to have um, the peas, you do like the peas, they don't, you know, just have another plate, take this risotto out before you add the peas in, and then, you know, everything is copacetic. You don't have to worry about it. You got that little kid going, I don't want peas. You mean take out the risotto for them that wouldn't want peas and put it on, a, like, a serving plate and yep. then add the peas right into the pot, pot there for, for the for, others? For the others, yeah. <laughs> we hear you. It's not all about Zoa. It is all about Zoa, though, honestly. Does anybody else's dog, like, just stand next to the bed and bark? 
for you to pick them up and put them on your bed. And then while you do that, they take your spot. So then you're like sleeping like this and wake up the next morning, got to go earn a living, cooking all day. And you're like, Ben, crooked. I'm Zedric. Thank you guys are hungry. <laughs> Can I help you, sir? Alright, so I'm a few um, scoops away from having all this liquid in, so I am going to go ahead and turn this on now. And I'm going to turn this on to a medium high. before the um, scallops go in. Um, we have two, one tablespoon of butter, but it's a half cup of oil, I believe. We need to make sure that there's enough oil that's gonna surround the scallop in the pan. Now, of course, your pan is gonna make a different size than mine, so you may need a little bit more or also less that science isn't necessarily on point um, by the recipe based on the pan you're using so you just want I'd say a quarter inch to less of oil not you know you're not deep frying these things so want to te uh, check the texture of the risotto and then we can also taste it see where the salt and pepper needs to be my texture is getting really good I you know do always like things a little bit more al dente um, and that flavor is really nice from that chicken stock um, so depending on what kind of chicken broth stock you're using that's why I don't really tell you an amount of salt to add to these because you may have a normal, you may have low sodium, you're gonna have something that's not necessarily going to be the same as what I have here. And we don't wanna ruin your dish by me saying, go ahead and put a teaspoon of salt in and when you do that, you'll ruin it. So just do that to taste. Same thing for the pepper. I really like a coarse grind on the pepper in risotto too. Nothing that's super fine because when it's super fine, it spreads out a lot and it can change the color of the dish. You like those little bit of a coarse grind so you get little pockets of those pepper popping off in there. It makes it really flavorful and just kind of little surprises throughout the dish, right? the entire bottom of the pan. I am using olive oil. And then one pat of butter in there as well. The oil will help the butter not burn so much, but you can do straight butter for your scallops and we would call that a brown butter scallop. As that butter starts to burn. But caramelized butter is flavored, so you know, it just depends if you like brown butter or not. I'm just uh, grabbing my salt, my pepper, um, I have my lemon juice, my lemon zest, Parmesan cheese, and tarragon. I'm going to grab this and bring it all over. Yes. 
super creamy there. All right, we can get our scallops out. I have 10, um, didn't necessarily tell you how many I did, but we're just gonna do five a piece for Sarah and I. You can kind of hear the butter and the oil working together. I'll give that a little movement just to kind of get the butter throughout the pan. Salt. On both sides. A little bit of pepper. Forget about your risotto, just give it a little stir. Give your scallops a flip. All right. Make sure you're using your ears, guys. Your ears are very important when it comes to cooking. You hear something in your risotto where it's kind of starting to simmer a little bit. Move it around. Don't let anything burn. We don't want to ruin it now. We're on the home free zone. All right, I did salt those. So we're going to pepper them now. Now, if you feel comfortable just using your fingers to throw these in the pan, go ahead. If not, use the tongs, whatever you need to. I suggest tongs um, because when you flip them, you just want to grab it and, and turn it over. All right. So we're looking at about two minutes on that side and get that nice color on there. I have about one, or another maybe half a ladle left. I'm gonna go ahead and throw my peas in now. And we'll add that into the dish. Just for one thing, I forgot to take these out so they're a little on the cold side. So we wanna let that kind of heat up a little. You're gonna start to smell those scallops, and man, I love that smell. It is such a great aroma. About another minute. Get antsy. Don't get antsy, let it cook. You got a um, another minute, maybe two minutes on the other side, um, but you don't want to, you know, go uh, too long. The inside of the scallop, you want real tender. All right, so we'll go ahead and check those ones. Try to remember which one you put down first. Start with those and just start flipping. Really hope that pan doesn't come out of there one day and hit the pan. I'll go into the emergency room. <laughs> All right, so about another minute on the uh, scallops. Go ahead and make sure your risotto is on point. I like mine with a little bit of a bite. 
nothing you know, where it's crunchy, but you just want to have a nice bite to it. I'm going to season the mine up with a little salt and pepper here. Mm -hmm. I definitely needed that. Now the other thing is about your scallops, when you pull them off, they're going to have what we call residual heat that is going to uh, keep them cooking, right? So we want to get them off with just a little bit more time where they don't dry out and get too overdone, right? They get real bouncy. How do you know when to take them off? Um, I would say, depending on the size, these guys were it's pretty much um, three minutes I had them in for, two on one side, one minute on the other. Um, you can kind of tell, I mean, they have a little bit of a crack to them, but scallops are just one of those things that you kind of have to get a feel for. Um, it's really, really hard to tell an exact time to scallops. Uh, but literally two minutes on that first side, they get that brown crust, flip it over, you'll have a minute to, you know, a minute and a half, and then pull them off. And then, you know, just let them sit, and then we'll come up to temp. All right, I'm gonna set the scallops here, bring my cutting board over, I'll set it here, and then I'm gonna add everything else actually in on this side. If you want to take a quick peek at this and you know you can kind of see the texture if you like. See? See the texture. See the texture. You see it's nice and creamy. The rice is puffed up. We'll uh, take a little taste. Rice is cooked through, not really mushy, which is what you're looking for. Um, it's got like a nice firm texture to it, and um, it's, it's really perfect at this point. All right, so now we're gonna add in all of these great flavors that are gonna really bring it home. All right, now, don't oversalt this because Parmesan is gonna have, you know, a good amount of salt to it. Your uh, lemon zest and then your lemon juice will give a little bit more liquid to the dish, just a little, not too much. It's not gonna like water it down or anything. We'll give this a quick stir. I think the guy that invented that uh, San Francisco treat was a risotto. Hey. <clears throat> I think I got a piece there. I think that San Francisco treat stuff, was, the guy was a risotto fan, right? And then we'll throw in our tarragon and just give it another light toss. Just kind of fold it in, guys. Don't vigorously stir it. You don't want to, you know, make everything start breaking down and getting mushy. All 
I usually always will say to go with an odd number when you serve things. That's why I say like three or five or seven, something along those lines. And just a little bit of that fresh tarragon over the top. If you want, you can stick a sprig in there, clean up your plate a little. And there we go. Scallops, perfectly seared, sweet pea risotto. Flavors are gonna go together beautifully. So, relatively easy. It is kind of fast. Um, it's just, you know, a little bit tedious because you're over the stove the whole time. It's not something that you're just gonna set and forget, but it is well worth it to make it on your own. And this will go with any kind of really nice white fish, cod, um, monkfish if you can find it, haddock, anything like that. I do like skin on fish a lot because it gives a little bit more texture to it. So um, if anybody has any more questions, let us know. Let us know where you're at if you have, um, you know, anything going on. Other than that, it is dinner time and we're going to get out of here, get some food in us. We'll see you next Sunday. Vinny is out. Have a great night, guys. Thank you so much. Catch you next time.